Well, hey, at last, it's sunglasses and sun cream weather. Right, we've had a, a real difficult period, to be honest, where we've had frost, rain, winds, and, and everything's been wrong for catching fish. And finally, the weather's broke. We've got 20 degrees, a nice, nice wind from the side, and the fish are wanting to feed up shallow. Now, a lot of the fish have been spawning, a lot of the carp are spawning in the margins, but it's still been possible to catch these fish in the upper layers out at a distance, and I fished round about 14 and a half metres out from the bank. Now, to catch these fish, pellets is the main staple diet of these fish at Airfield. They just love pellets. So I fish with just six mil pellets, loose feeding six mils with a catapult. One thing that I can only stress as much as I can is that you must keep feeding regularly. It's a case of keeping your catapult almost in the hand all the time. And pinging pellets out to 14 and a half metres, not a lot, probably every sort of 20 seconds, I've pinged four or five or six pellets. Not a vast amount, but enough so that you've got a momentum of feed in the water. And this is the key to shallow fishing, is momentum of feed. The more regular you can feed, the more fish you'll keep in the area. The rig that I've fished with has been really simple. I've just used a very small crystal dibber. Now crystal dibbers are almost indestructible. They've got a very, very fine stem to the base of them, just a, a, a fiberglass stem, which helps the float to sit immediately. And I've fished with just a block of four number tens on the smallest point tool float. Now this has been set probably about two foot deep to two and a half foot. But what you've actually got, when you slap the rig over, You've got the noise of the float hitting the water, the noise of the little block of shot, and also the noise from the six mil pellet. And this is why you don't need to feed a lot of pellets, because you can helicopter the rig over, you can lift it over and slap it on the water. And then three points of your rig actually make enough noise to draw the fish into the area. So you don't want to feed too many pellets, just five or six at a time, and then slap the rig over. Today, two or three times, and then let the float relax. Fish for a little while, only maybe 10 or 15 seconds, lift the float out again and slap it over again. So your bait's almost falling through the water constantly. And you'll find that a lot of the bites come on the drop, or just as the float has settled. What is also important is to keep the line tight. I cannot again stress this enough. The line from the float, from where the, the line comes off the eye of the float to the pole tip needs to be as tight as possible all the time. The tighter you can keep that, even just lifting the float slightly keeps you in touch with that float keeping the pole as direct above the float as possible. But what you'll find when you've got a wind like we've had today, a crosswind, the wind you can actually use to an advantage. So the wind itself will keep that line tight to the float. Now the reason for this, when you get a bite off a carp, often they're very, very quick. And because that line's tight, some will pull the pole down. Others you'll just have to lift onto the fish. Now what I've also found at Hayfield is that often the fish back off after a while. You can catch quite well, and it happened again today where I caught three or four carp quite early, but then the fish start to back off away from the pole tip. And this is where fishing a swinging rig comes into its own, because you can target those fish that hang back off the pellets. Now, when you actually pick up a swinging rig, it's important to still feed the pellets in the same area, just at 14 and a half metres. So you're pinging pellets regularly to 14 and a half. But of course, with a swinging rig, you've got more line above. 
Now, because I'm fishing then swinging out past the pellets, I use a different float altogether. I change onto a, a crystal caster float. Now, this has got a titanium stem in the base. And of course, that titanium stem puts quite a bit of weight in the base of the float. And I fished just a 0.3 and also I set up a 0.4 as well today, just in case the wind increased. And it did later on in the session. But a 0.3 with a block of shot underneath the float, I think I'd probably three number eights tight underneath the float and then just four number 12 strung out through the rig, set slightly deeper. Now the reason I set it deeper is because I'm fishing more on the drop. The line above the float from the, the, the actual eye of the float now to the pole tip has been extended and it's probably around about a metre maybe even a little bit longer than a metre, so I can swing that rig out a distance past where I'm feeding. And this is a great way to target them fish once they back off from where the pellets are, from where the pellets are landing at 14 and a half. Now actually swinging that rig out is done by a, just a pendulum motion. You're almost swinging the float in and swinging out past the bait. But again, it's absolute paramount to keep that line as tight as possible. So you're keeping the pole up off the water and keeping that line tight to the float. Today it's been quite difficult to do because we've had a crosswind. An ideal wind is when you've got a slight wind off the back. And then it's very, very easy to keep that line tight. And it's amazing, you know, carp and, and Carasio, what we've caught today, are very, very difficult to hook at times. But of course, if you keep that line tight, it's amazing how many bites you still hook, even fishing out past your bait. Get the rigs right, get your elastics right. Today I've just used the 10 to 12 bungee in the yellow one. Now this is quite important because once you hook a fish, you don't want too heavy your elastic on. You want those fish to swim down and away from where the feeding fish are, in among the pellets. So you don't want to use too heavy your elastic. This yellow bunge is perfect for when you want to ship back fairly quickly. You can get quite a lot of elastic out. Once you get to the net, it's easy just to shorten down to land the fish, just to put that little bit of extra pressure to get the fish to the surface to net them. One little tip I can give you, when you're fishing in the summertime, when the sun's out, elastic tends to suffer badly. The, the elastic itself suffers from the heat and it'll wear out very quickly if you don't keep the elastic inside the pole. So using just a very simple rubber hook up on the pole, halfway up or wherever it needs to be on the section of pole, you can store the elastic inside the pole. I see so many anglers stretch the rig out and put the hook in the base of the top two. And all they're doing is, is creating problems with the elastic because it will deteriorate very quickly in sunlight. So use hookups to store your elastic inside. Just keep that little bit of tension on just to keep the elastic tight and your rig will stay with the pole when it's in the actual rest. Today I've also used a change bait of red pellets. When the water becomes quite coloured like it is today, I mean, once the fish get active, all of these type of lakes colour up very, very quickly. And when the water's coloured, a red pellet does stand out. And also quite a dark coloured pellet, you believe it or believe it not, also stands out very well silhouetted as it falls through the water. A couple of things that are a must when you're fishing in the summer is wearing polarised sunglasses. It protects your eyes from sun damage, so look after your eyes, the most important for seeing your float. Also, wearing sun cream. The number of times I've returned home from a great day's fishing with my ears falling off is not good. So I've had a, a real great day's fishing. I've caught maybe, maybe 70, 80 pound and not fished 
that long at all really it's been a great great session get that sun cream on get the sunglasses on and get out there and catch some fish shallow <laughs>